Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and this is episode 2 of the platformer level generation tutorial series, which is basically a set of videos focused on recreating the amazing level generation system found in Spelunky using Unity and C Sharp. In the previous video, we began the project, getting our level generator to move about the scene, spawning rooms. However, as you can see, the level generation never ends. Rooms are being spawned on top of each other, as well as outside of the level's boundaries. So there's loads of things to fix. First of all, let's make sure the level generation doesn't breach the level's limits we established in episode 1. Doing so is very easy, so heading back into my level generation script, I'll create three public float variables, one called min x, the other max x, and lastly min y. Down here I'll make an if statement checking whether the level generator's current x position is smaller than the max x value. If it is, only then will I allow my level generator to move right. If not, that means the level generator has reached the limit of the level, and so we'll simply get it to move down by setting direction equal to 5. Down here I'll check whether the level generation's x position is greater than the min x value, and only then will I allow it to move left. If not, I'll set direction equal to 5, so that it moves down instead. Lastly, before getting my level generator to move down, I'll make sure that it still can, that it hasn't reached the limits of the level by creating an if statement, checking whether the level generation's y position is still greater than min y. If, however, the level generation wants to go down, but has already reached the bottom of the level, then it's time to stop the level generation altogether and place the level's exit. To do so, I'll create a private bool variable called stop generation and set that equal to true down here. In my update function, where I'm calling the move function every 0.25 seconds, I'll not only make sure that time between room is less or equal to zero, but that stop generation is also equal to false. If it is, great. The level generation generation can carry on. If not, then the move function will no longer get calls, and so no more rooms will spawn. Let's now head back into Unity, and before pressing play to test things out, I'll make sure to type out the values for min x, max x, and min y. So my min x is minus 5, my max x is 25, and finally my min y is minus 25. With that all set up, I'll hit play, and you'll see that rooms no longer spawn outside of the level. And you'll also notice that the level generation stops when it tries going down again, when it's already reached the bottom of the map. However, there's still one little problem. Rooms are spawning on top of each other. To avoid this, we simply need to make sure that when the level generation starts moving right, for example, it cannot move left again until it moves down one notch. Same with the level generation decides to move left. Once it started in that direction, it should only be allowed to move left or down. So back inside of Visual Studio, I'm going to set direction equal to a random number between 1 and 2, after these lines of code have been run. This will make sure that since the level generator has moved right, it will keep moving right and not move left. However, written like this, the level generation will not have a chance to move down, because remember, direction must be equal to 5 for that to happen. So I'll make sure to change that to a random number between 1 and 5. Again, the last number, in this case 6, is not included. And then I'll make an if statement checking whether direction is equal to 3. If it is, then I'll change it to be equal to 2. This way it does not move left, but continues moving right. And if it's equal to 4, I'll change it instead to 5, so it moves down instead of the dreaded left. Awesome. And so if the level generation has started moving left, I'll set direction to be equal to a random number between 3 and 5. This way direction will not be equal to 1 and 2, and as a result, the level generator will not move Right. Lastly, when the level generator moves down, I'll set direction to be equal to any number between 1 and 5, because at this point I don't care whether it keeps moving down or starts moving left or right. In either case, no rooms will spawn on top of each other. I'll of course get rid of this line of code, hop back inside of Unity and hit play. And as expected, rooms no longer spawn on top of each other. Great. The next step is to get the correct room type spawning. Because for now, we're only spawning this simple room with left and right openings. Obviously, this is not only boring, but will also block the player from progressing to the game's exits. 
So I head back into my level generation script and type out a comment next to the rooms array. I'll decide that the room of index 0 will have left and right openings. The room of index 1 will have left, right and a bottom opening. The room of index 2 will have left, right and a top opening. And finally, the room of index 3 will have openings in all four directions. And I'll make sure to place all those rooms in order inside of that array in Unity. So when I'm moving right, I don't really care what room type I spawn since all rooms have left and right openings. So I'll create an int variable called rand and set that equal to a random number between 0 and the amount of elements inside of my rooms array, which is to say 4. And then I'll instantiate a random room from that array using that newly made rand int variable. Same thing for when I'm moving left, it doesn't matter what room spawns, no room type will block the player from progressing in the level. However, when I'm moving down, here's when things get a bit more tricky. Here I need to not only make sure that the room I'm dropping into has a top opening, but I also need to make sure that the room before has a bottom opening. This way the player doesn't get stuck. So I'll start by spawning a room with a top opening when the level generator moves down by setting rand equal to a random number between 2 and 3 because remember, rooms of index 2 and 3 have top openings. And then I'll instantiate either that left, right and top opening room or that room with openings in all directions. Now we must make sure that the previous room has a bottom opening, because for now it's entirely possible that it doesn't. For example, the level generator could spawn a room with a left and right opening only and then move down, which creates this nasty dead end. So what I'm going to do is get the level generator to cast an invisible circle around itself before moving down that detects the room type. If the level generator detects a room that has a bottom opening, awesome. If not, then it will destroy the room and replace it with one that does have a bottom opening. To do all this, I'm going to make a new c -sharp script called room type and place that onto all of my room prefabs. In it, I'll make a simple public int variable called type as well as a public void function called room destruction that will destroy the game object on which the script is attached to. In Unity, I'll set my left and right room type equal to zero, my left right bottom room type equal to one, left right top equal to two, and finally, the all four direction type equal to three. Basically, just like the indexes of the rooms array. Heading back inside of my level generation script, I'll now get my level generator game object casting that invisible circle I talked about earlier. So I'll create a collider 2D variable called room detection and set that equal to physics 2D dot overlap circle. For the invisible circle's position, I'll give it the level generator's transform dot position. A small radius of one should be fine, and then I can type out the name of a layer mask. So I'll quickly create a layer mask variable called room and plug that in right there. This just makes sure that the invisible circle will only detect rooms and not other objects with colliders. With that done, I'll check whether the room the invisible circle has collided with isn't of type 1 or 3. In other words, if the room doesn't have a bottom opening. If it doesn't have a bottom opening, then I'll call the room destruction function so that the room is destroyed and in its place I'll spawn a room of type 1 or 3, so a room with a bottom opening. Lastly, make sure to remove this line of code right at the bottom of the script that we typed out in episode 1. That spawns a room with left and right openings. And there we go! Now, before hitting play, make sure to add to each room prefab a 2D box collider as well as a room layer. Then set the room layer mask variable equal to room so that the invisible circle detects those rooms and can figure out what's the room type. Hitting play, you'll see that I still get dead ends though. Why is that, you might ask? Well, it's simply because all the tiles that make up the room are spawning inside of the hierarchy without being parented to the actual room game object. What we would like is that they spawn as a child of the room. This way, when the room is destroyed, then all its children, such as the tiles, will also be destroyed. So I'll jump inside of the spawn object script we made in episode 1 and make sure to store the game object we instantiate inside of this instance variable. Then I'll simply set the instance variable has a child of whatever spawned it in the first place, which is the room game object. 
So this is the child and this is going to be the parent. Now I'll hit play and things seem to work really nicely. The level generator is spawning a neat little path for the player to traverse without any dead ends. You'll also notice that the hierarchy looks a lot cleaner now that the tiles are parented to the room game objects. However, if you try this out a couple times, you will notice that sometimes when the level generator moves down twice in a row, a dead end appears. This is a small quirk we will make sure to fix in the next video of this series. In the meantime, here's another well done and thank you for having stayed right up until the end. We're making some great progress here, but obviously there's still loads to do, such as fix that bug I mentioned, spawn rooms in the rest of the level once the critical path completes, and make each individual room more unique and interesting. Episode 3 should come out in 3 days time. Until then, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the video and found it interesting. It's so appreciated and encouraging. Also consider supporting me financially via Patreon, like these top supporters. Also a quick reminder to follow me on Twitter, where currently I'm posting my Inktober drawings, as well as join the BTP Discord server if you need any help with this video or just want to chat with other cool game developers, artists, musicians and programmers. Alright, stay tuned, cheers!